Essex chased bonus points rather than trying to establish a large first innings lead on the third day of their LV County Championship match against Kent in Canterbury and that allowed the home side to balance the game up with just a day to go after Mitch Claydon claimed his first five wicket haul for Kent. With Tom Wesley and Ravi Bapara with hundreds to their names, the penultimate day of this match got underway a couple of hours late with Essex on 253 for one and trailing by 134 runs. But Wesley was at last out, nicking off to Claydon, having added only two runs to his overnight 114. That ended a second wicket partnership of 243 made in 76 overs. The next one added just 16 more runs and then Jesse Ryder was yorked by Claydon, who now had all three Essex wickets to fall, two coming with the second new ball. With time lost in the morning, James Foster had decided that securing bonus points was all important and so he promoted himself in the batting order, coming in at number 5 with the score on 283 for 3 in the 88th over. 22 were left then for Essex to accumulate a further 117 runs for the maximum amount of batting points and Foster played some tremendous shots as he first took his side past 300 and then to 350, the latter being reached in over number 103. That 350 was made in the same over that Bapara got to his 150. He'd begun the day on 112 and had batted calmly in getting to his latest milestone. By now he'd been at the crease for 290 balls, from which he struck only 10 fours and one six. He'd been made to work hard for his runs and thoroughly deserved to be raising his bat for a third time. Foster was still going for his shots at the other end and he cleared the ropes with a sensational sweep off Darren Stevens to move on to 46. But next ball he was well taken behind by Sam Billings with a total on 361 for four. Foster's partnership with Bapara realising 78 runs in 16 overs. So Essex now had the best part of seven overs to grab another 39 runs to reach 400 in time and Bapara showed his class by reeling off a couple of sublime drives as he moved on to 162, taking the total to 373 in the process. Getting to 400 in time now seemed to be a breeze. But things changed when Bapara edged a ball from Ben Harmison which bounced a bit more. Billings completed the dismissal to give Harmison his first wicket of the season. Bapara had been batting for six hours, leaving it to Ryan Tenderscarter to try to get the necessary runs to complete the bonus point job. A couple of fours took the score to 399, with seven balls left in which to score those bonus points. Tender Scarter then fed Stevens a catch off Harmison, leaving it to the others to make the most of the 110th over. Nothing came off the first ball before Ben Folks was bowled by Adam Riley as the batsman tried to clear the infield. The next two deliveries were also dot balls before Monty Panasar, in at number nine, also failed to get a ball over the top. Doug Bollinger with a catch at mid-on. Perhaps Timo Mills should have been brought in earlier as, after three wickets had fallen with the score on 399, he did get the run required of the last ball of Riley's over before he took on the others. He struck some meaty blows as the lead started to build. Kent had been dismissed for 387. This was the pick of Mills' shots, a huge hit off Riley that ended up in the top tier of the Colin Cowdery stand. Moments later, the players were off for rain and 20 more overs were lost from the day. On the resumption, Mills had made 30 off 21 balls when he was trapped in front by Claydon for his fourth wicket of the innings. And his first fifer for Kent arrived at the end of his next over as he had David Masters caught off a swiss by Brendan Nash. Claydon finished with figures of 5 for 82 as Essex were all out for 440. That gave them a lead of 53 on first innings, but due to the rain they now had only 15 overs at Kent second time around. Rob Key started nicely. Ryder was again on early after his career best bowling performance on the first day and he and his teammates were convinced that they had Daniel Bell Drummond out. It was a celebration rather than an appeal, but the umpire didn't agree. That helped Kent get to 35 without loss by the close, which means that they'll go into the final day trailing by just 18 runs. 
So this game looks set to be drawn unless something out of the ordinary occurs on day four.